Okay. Um, hi. I'd like to welcome welcome you to FMS 2020. Um, I'm Kurt Lender, the co-chair of the CXL Marketing Workgroup. I'm also a senior ecosystem uh, manager at Intel Corporation, and I'm here with CMAC um, Diwali, and we are going to introduce the CXL specification. But in the first, uh, CMAC, can you introduce yourself? Uh, thank you very much, Kurt. This is Siamak Tavali. I'm the co-chair of the CXL task, technical task force, also a principal architect with uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. Okay, thank you. Um, so like I said, we're going to introduce the 2.0 specification at a very high level. Um, you'll see a lot more detail coming out from the marketing work group and other. Uh, we'll have a webinar actually in December. December 10th is the date now. We'll be posting a white paper on CXL uh, 2.0 specification. So again, um, this is a high level. And what I will do is, again, talk about CXL in general, some of the market um, needs and why we did CXL. And then CMAC will go into some of the details on the specification itself. Uh, so the first thing is what drove the, uh, the need for CXL, and that's this industry landscape that you're seeing. Um, we we see the proliferation of cloud computing today. Everything is being moved to the cloud. Companies are putting more and more of their applications out there. Um, data being analyzed um, right and left. You know, growth of AI and analytics. Um, that's you know, so there's more need for data movement, data storage uh, in that sense. And then cloudification of the network and edge, um, they're actually moving out to the cloud too. So again, this proliferation of the cloud is just moving everywhere. Um, with this, there's some growing demands basically. Um, all these uh, needs basically are driving the demand for faster processing. So with CXL, we've latched on to the PCIe specification. Um, we're on PCI 5 today. And we'll certainly, we're monitoring the 6.0 uh, evolution that, that PCIe is looking at now. Um, so we'll continue to, to drive uh, faster processing uh, both through the, the bus, and CX, uh, PCIe, and then the latencies and things that CXL brings to the table. Um, the other thing that, that all these uh, that you're seeing in this environment is the need for heterogeneous processing. Um, there are different deployment models that are growing. Um, you see, obviously, uh, CPUs, like from my company, Intel. You have FPGAs uh, from Intel's, from Xilinx of the world. You have custom ASICs being produced. Um, and all these are being put into the same solutions. Um, you know, they're basically competitive solutions that need to work together. Um, so this need for heterogeneous computing, the, the um, the computing really tuned to the application and optimized to the application uh, is growing. The other thing that, that the landscape is seeing is really the need for increased memory capacity and bandwidth. And again, with CXL, we have the .mem um, capability. And you'll see, as CMOC talks about uh, 2.0, it's uh, the memory space is one of the areas where we definitely um, Put bigger usage models into the CXL 2.0 uh, specification. And then the last is with the, the growth of memory, you're seeing different memory tiers. Uh, so again, it's one of the other added things uh, for CXL 2.0 is some of the persistent memory hooks that we've put in. So um, the response to the needs was CXL itself. And like I said, it's been one year since we incorporated with one of the strongest boards, uh, board of directors uh, in the industry. Um, we have the leading cloud providers. We have leading OEMs. We have all four CPU vendors. Um, we really have the industry leaders and uh, influencers in the CXL consortium. Um, and again, we're seeing the excitement grow more and more. Uh, we're up to 130 members today. Um, and that's really, um, at adopter, contributor, or promoter level. Um, we did open up the 1.1 specification. It is public. We're going to do the same for 2.0 also. Uh, the difference is adopters class get, you know, as you uh, implement, you get the IP protection rights from the CXL consortium. So we do recommend that you come in uh, 
at certainly an adopter level or we hope contributor level, which again, you can join. Uh, we are up to five different technical work groups. You can contribute to those work groups as a contributor and influence the 3.0 and beyond um, uh, specifications for CXL. And the last, of course, this is open. Um, I've already said it's going to be totally open. Um, but again, this is open to the industry and being driven by the industry. The other thing I'll mention on CXL 2.0 is that we are going to, it will be backwards compatible with 1.1. So there is that, um, you know, reuse and uh, bringing forward of, of technology for that matter. You don't throw away previous revisions of your, your implementations. So I've already mentioned the left side here, the challenges, um, the industry need for faster processing and, and next for the next gen data centers, um, the heterogeneous computing, the increased uh, need for memory capacity and bandwidth. And really we needed, um, at this time last year, we really didn't have um, a unified uh, specification, open specification. Um, that, like I said, the excitement around CXL, I, I do believe that uh, the industry really is coalescing around CXL. Um, CXL brings to the table and the features it brings are the three listed on the right here. It's a coherent interface that really mixes and matches through protocols. Uh, .io, um, that's really a packetized version of PCIe. Um, and then the two others uh, are the .cache and .mem, and that's the two that bring the coherency to the memory uh, between accelerators and, or um, TXL attached devices, I should say, and root complexes. And all this is done, uh, the dot .cache and dot .mem are done with low latency, uh, basically designed in. And low latency, I mean like cache coherent type um, levels of, of, of latency. So very low latency. Um, asymmetric complexity is the last feature, uh, major feature of 1.1, and that's where the burden really is put on the root complex. And the endpoints can migrate from generation to gen generation. They can actually migrate from uh, different CPU vendors for that matter. Um, and again, there's reuse of, of um, basically designs moving from one gen to another. And then last, you, this is the usage models. Um, we basically call them type one, two, and three. Um, and this is where you can see that there is the uh, mix and match nature of the protocols. .io is always there, and that's for enumerating the system and, and basically setting it up. Um, but then you get into the different types. Type one is where <clears throat> you have a, a, some a CXL a, attached device like a NIC or some, some, something like that, and it can share the processor memory. Um, the type two is where you have the dot memory uh, protocol, and that's where if that uh, CXL attached device has memory, the CPU can share it also. Uh, so again, there's there's a wider range and, and growth of the, the memory space here. And then the last one is where the CPU actually can just add memory um, to its to its uh, to its system, and that's with the dot mem. Um, Protocol, and again, this is one of the areas where we've expanded uh, significantly for CXL 2.0. So I'll now hand it over to CMOC to talk about some of the features, key features um, that we've introduced with CXL 2.0. Uh, thank you very much, Kurt. Uh, as uh, Kurt suggested, point-to-point -point devices, the processor connecting to end devices and providing um, low latency, high bandwidth interconnect for uh, devices that could benefit from load store semantics. And that is on top of the CXL.io, which is very similar to PCIe for uh, moving block mode operations, DMA style. The dot mem and dot cache provide for low latency uh, interconnect for, uh, for caching devices or smart devices. So as Kurt suggested, 
um, the physical layer running on PCIe Gen 5 providing 32 gigabits per, tran per transfer was good enough for uh, these end-to-end -end devices, point-to-point uh, -point devices. But then people also asked for uh, fanning out so that one root port can address multiple end devices. Um, CXL 2.0 addressed that by introducing one layer of switching. So um, devices underneath each switch could still be caching devices or could be memory type devices. Uh, one layer of switching uh, still provides a very large fan out. Each host may have multiple CXL uh, links. Each uh, switch can have multiple subordinate links and therefore very many devices can be connected to one host. A second um, major feature that could be enabled using a CXL 2.0 is the fact that uh, CXL 2.0 switches can be multi-host capable by specification. Um, diagram to the left is showing a, a CXL switch connected to multiple CPUs, multiple hosts, and multiple devices down below. In this example, uh, host one connects to device two and device three and forms one major hierarchy, whereas, for example, host three is connected to device four. That capability is enabled using CXL Fabric Manager that runs in conjunction with the CXL 2.0 switch. That is in CXL Fabric Manager is in charge of assigning hosts to devices, to end devices. An enhanced version of this or a more capable version of that is when the end device itself is capable of subdividing itself into multiple logic devices. So an MLD device, multi-logic device, can uh, be programmed to uh, be bound to multiple hosts. Up to 16 hosts are supported within the CXL 2.0 uh, switches. The switch itself can be connected to more than 16 hosts, but each device can, can be connected to up to 16 hosts. In this example, uh, hierarchy one, host one, uh, is comprised, uh, comprising host one, device one, uh, a portion of device two, and a portion of device four, whereas uh, host three in a different hierarchy is using a portion of device two, a portion of device three, a portion of device four, and a portion of device n in this example. Uh, as, as we described, CXL provides a load latency high bandwidth uh, transport to devices such as DRAM um, and to device to uh, devi devices that are of higher latency such as storage devices. The piece that we added also with CXL 2.0 was specific uh, support for persistent memory. The type of memory that could look like a storage element but would like to live with uh, load store semantics at much smaller latency. Uh, for example, in tens or hundreds of nanoseconds instead of microseconds. To support that, um, the concept of global persistent flush was also introduced so that uh, individual root ports or individual hosts could command cycles to be flushed all the way to persistent store. Uh, another major feature part of CXL 2.0 was the encryption and security uh, implementation on individual links. Modeled after IDE as part of PCIe uh, implementation, but enhanced for CXL.memory and CXL.cache, um, 
the encryption capability are link based. Uh, it when the when the cycles leave the root port, they could be encrypted, and when they uh, enter the end device, they get decrypted. Uh, links could include in this model routes or links could include uh, switches, so the encryption is maintained through the CXL switch as well. Kurt, would you like to bring us back to the summary slide, please? Thank you, Simak. Um, so again, a quick, quick, quick summary of 2.0. Um, so again, I want to highlight CXL Consortium, the momentum is growing. Um, we've been at this now for a year and we're now at 130 members and growing, so come join us. Um, we're on the second generation of the specification, and I know that the technical task forces or the board groups are starting the work on the next generation spec. So again, I've mentioned uh, contributors get that opportunity. Um, you're not too late. Uh, you can join us, join us now and help contribute to that. And again, CXO really is, we're looking at responding to um, industry needs. So that's another spot where I know there's a lot of discussions going on in the sense of where should CXL continue to go. Um, the middle column here, CXL added things like switching. Um, we needed more, uh, we wanted to grow the system size. So the expansion uh, phenomena of switching plus the pooling where you could create these pools of resources. Um, Mary being one of them uh, that, that you could tap into. Persistent memory support, um, that again gives you that tiering inside memory um, and is something that was requested by the industry. Uh, certainly in Flash Memory Summit, there's a lot of folks doing that, doing those types of devices um, in this show. And then security uh, was certainly a key feature that will be continued to, to augment. All this, we are backwards compatible with uh, the current rev, TXL 1.1 and, and 1.0. Um, that will continue, that is one of the base legs of TXL. Um, we'll continue that moving forward. And then the last one that we really didn't talk about here is um, there is a chapter in the 2.0 specification on compliance and interoperability. That work group is going to roll out their program fairly shortly in either the latter part of Q4 or Q1. So we don't have that announcement in here, but that will be one of the things to look for uh, moving forward. And then the call to action really is, as I've said, join the uh, CXL consortium. Adopters the lowest level gives you the IP rights. Um, but again, contributors and promoters certainly uh, can join the work groups and contribute uh, in that sense. This is a public specification, so if you're interested in, in looking at it first, go out on the website and, and grab it in that sense. Excuse me, there will also be, uh, there is a white paper actually posted by this time. Uh, it's one of the funny things about being virtual is we're doing this in advance, but all this will be posted by the time that we actually do this presentation. Uh, and then I've also mentioned that we're starting our webinar series on 2.0 on December 10th. Um, that is, that will be a high level overview, a little more deep, uh, a little more depth than this overview. Um, but we'll probably do in Q1, we'll go into even more detail on some of these features for that matter. So continue to follow us um, and look for, for that. Follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, we're also have, to, we're doing regular blogs. So again, there are more than enough ways. Um, go through the website to monitor the uh, movement of CXL and, and the excitement coming in the future. So with that, I will say thank you. And we will have a quick Q&A timeframe to answer any questions. So thanks and have a good FMS.